All right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So I just received a package here, and I think it's from the What's Inside guys. Uh, they told me that they were going to be sending me a watch or something. So let's uh, pop this open and see what it is. Okay, something wrapped up in some paper here. And indeed it is a watch. A Rolex, in fact. That's fancy. <laughs> so I think what they want me to do is actually figure out what metals are present and then see if I can extract anything precious. So like if there's gold, which that looks like gold, uh, to extract the gold into a button of metal and then I guess I'll send it back to them. So first of all I'd like to find out what metals are here. Now I can guess, or I can break out the x-ray gun while I still have it. Alright, so I got the x-ray gun all booted up. Let's do a quick uh, five second alloy check, just because uh, we're not looking for trace levels. This is going to be pretty high percentages of whatever we find. And we'll do a whole bunch of different places around on the watch. Uh, let's start with this right here, which we suspect to be gold. Just to confirm, maybe get an idea of just how much gold is there. So I can already see that there's some silver, some iron and nickel, probably metal around it, or maybe metal that's under it. I don't know if it's solid gold or if it's just gold filled. This isn't going to really tell me. Let me just focus on that. Let's go look at this highest pike. Yeah, 9.7. And then 11.5. Let's go look over there. 11.4, and there it is. Spike at 11.4. So there's definitely gold here. And it looks like the most uh, prevalent, so it's at least, I'd say maybe 18 carat. But I don't know if that is solid or just plated. Considering the value of the watch, I would be inclined to think it may be actually solid. So let's uh, check some other places. Let's check right here. Let's see what this metal is. It might be silver. Uh, judging from the last run, it looked like it was stainless steel. And yeah, I'm seeing iron and nickel. Uh, so a few more things to check. Uh, the actual watch, let's see what those gears are made out of. I doubt they're gold, but it doesn't hurt to check. Yeah, so mostly copper and zinc. Just a little bit of some other metals. So to summarize, uh, basically everything that is on the outside of the watch and looks like gold is gold, at least on the surface. Uh, high carat gold, you know, 18 carat, possibly more, possibly less. Oh, a gear fell out. Oh well. And uh, the rest of it, the shiny bits look like stainless steel and the internals seem to be mostly brass some of which is uh, plated in nickel. The watch face is made of mother of pearl. Now that I know which bits are actually gold, I'm going to take a pair of needle nose pliers and unceremoniously rip them off from the watch. Alright, so I think I've got everything valuable separated out from the watch. So here's all our gold and diamonds, and here's the, the rest of it. So keep in mind that this still includes all the diamonds, but I've just placed it all on a scale, and you can see 16 and a half grams. So, assuming this is actually 18 karat gold, that should be about 12 grams of gold. So the first step to purifying the gold is to dissolve it. And for that, I'm just going to use a mixture of hydrochloric acid, and for the oxidizer, elemental bromine. So let me just uh, break the top off of this ampule here. And it was graceful. <laughs> and there we go. And that will oxidize the gold so that the hydrochloric acid can dissolve it. We just wash that down with a bit more acid. Now to seal it up with a glass stopper. And now the gold should dissolve. 
It'll probably take a couple of days at this temperature. Uh, something that I forgot to mention is that since this gold is 18 karat, it's less than 25% silver, I didn't have to encort it. Uh, for more on encorting, I'll put a link down in the description. So here we are. It's been well, more than a few days, but I think all the gold is dissolved now. Yeah, you can see the pieces of metal have turned white and crumbly. Basically, the gold has been dissolved out, leaving the silver behind. So now what we need to do is get rid of the excess bromine, otherwise we won't be able to get our gold back. And to do that, I'm going to heat it up, and I'm going to try to like distill off the bromine. Okay, so I'm setting up the distillation apparatus, but before I get too carried away, I'm going to add a little bit more water into the solution. This way I can boil it for longer without it uh, boiling dry. And the water vapor will carry off the bromine vapors. Time to hook this all up. And start heating. Okay, looks like we got some bromine dripping through. Very nice. Excess gases are being trapped there. Water's cooling everything. All right, everything's cooled down, and we've recovered the excess bromine. See, there's actually quite a bit there. Well, not really. It doesn't take very much bromine to dissolve the gold. So let's just unhook all this. Okay, so now I should be left with a gold chloride solution free of any oxidizing agents. Let's uh, get this filtered out to remove the silver. My center seems to have disappeared, so I'm going to use this Nile Red cylinder to separate out the silver using gravity. In case you're wondering, I am rinsing everything with dilute hydrochloric acid so as to not lose any gold. Also, if I keep the solution acidic, then the copper will stay in. If I make this uh, too alkaline or even close to neutral, the copper will fall out along with the gold. Now the silver's settled out, I'm going to pour off the top. Alright, so I finally got the solution cleared. You can see that its volume has substantially increased due to the washings. But it's finally time to drop the gold. And for that, I'm going to use sodium metabisulfate to form sulfur dioxide in situ, which selectively precipitates the gold as a metallic powder. So, here it goes. I'm just going to add in this as an excess. We should start seeing a brown powdered gold form. Give this a stir. All right, you can see it darkening down the bottom. And actually a little bit of uh, gold crystals are forming on the surface tension. Very nice. So here it is after I've rinsed out all of this green solution. We got some pure gold powder. So I've transferred the gold powder into a melting dish. So now I'm going to put it down inside of my furnace, which uh, I have rebuilt. You can see now it has much more insulation and a new element. And here we are. The gold has melted into a bead. Very nice. So I've cooled it down. Now, you can set on the scale is 10.94 grams. So. About a gram shy of my original estimate, which is decently close. Those diamonds, of course, did take up a bit of weight. So now let's look back at what didn't dissolve in the acid. This is primarily silver chloride sponge mixed with uh, diamonds, broken glass, and what looks to be some pieces of stainless steel. Let's start by sorting out all those gems. So here are the diamonds that came out of the watch. As you can see, they're not very big. Now I should be left with mostly silver chloride here. Although there's still a bunch of little bits of junk in with it. And I'm just going to dissolve all the silver chloride in ammonia. There's our ammonia. Alright, so it's been a few days and the silver is finally dissolved. Let's uh, decant off the clear liquid. And that should contain just the silver chloride ammonia complex. So now we want some metallic silver, right? So 
I'm just going to do a displacement using a piece of copper wire. The copper will displace the chlorine, leaving silver metal. You notice the solution is actually turning a bit blue. <laughs> yeah. Copper chloride and ammonia is a vibrant blue color. Well, just let that sit for another few days probably. <laughs> oh, let me uh, put this back on to keep the ammonia from evaporating. Okay, so it's been a couple of days. You can see the solution is bright blue from the copper and the silver has formed crystals which are currently falling off that wire. Okay, so here's everything precious that I was able to recover from that watch. Uh, you can see here is a vial of the silver crystals that we made. Now, the reason I didn't melt this into a bead like I did with the gold is the silver, with the amount that I'm working with here, most of it would have evaporated in the furnace. So I think it's better to leave it like this. It's more fluffy and voluminous anyway. Kind of more impressive. Now in case you're wondering how much this is all worth, I did do the math based off the current spot values and this is $465 in gold, about a dollar in silver, and I don't know for the diamonds. <laughs> so there you go, $7,000 watch, let's say $500 worth of metals, that's less than 10% of the original value of the watch. <laughs> So, let's uh, get this all packed up and sent back to them. Hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time.